Hi there, folks, and welcome to an update on an interesting earthquake that happened in Utah on Wednesday, September 10th. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. We're going to go over the basics of this earthquake. Nothing too earth shattering, I suppose, but this thing had some really interesting um, characteristics that I was able to figure some things out on as I dug a little deeper, kind of went down a rabbit hole on this one. So bear with me. I'm going to start with the basics of this earthquake, and we're going to get into why this earthquake was so different, what made this earthquake kind of really just, I guess, weird in many respects. So the earthquake occurred, again, uh, Wednesday, September 10th. Um, you can see the location of the earthquake here, just west of the town of Vernal in eastern Utah. This earthquake sits on the south flank of the east-west trending Uinta Mountains, sort of in the, the region, uh, the northern edge of the Colorado Plateau region, the area people know that, that exists in the Four Corners area, known for its kind of mostly flat-lying sedimentary rocks, spectacular scenery, things like that. Let's go ahead and switch over to the satellite view so you can kind of see exactly where this is in some detail. So there's the town of Vernal, the Uinta Mountains. And then again, the location of this earthquake, this 4.1 earthquake here in northeastern Utah. So let's go right to some of the data here. So this earthquake was felt by people. Um, no damage that I've heard of, you know, fairly small. Again, a 4.1 earthquake is not something I typically would talk about or do an update on, but this one was so interesting to me um, in so many respects. And I'll, again, I'll get to that here in just a second. So looking at the shake map, it looks like we had about 149, 150 people so far that have responded and have actually felt that earthquake kind of spread out over this region of northeastern Utah with the maximum shaking level at about a uh, Mercalli intensity four. So again, light shaking enough to get your attention, but not nearly enough to cause any damage or cause any injuries or anything like that. But it was felt in the area. So far, we're not seeing any aftershocks from this quake. It seems to be a, a, a sole event, a main shock event with no aftershocks that we've been able to perceive. So let's get into the weird aspects of this earthquake. What makes this thing so odd in this area? Well, there's two things, one of which is the beach ball. So looking at the focal mechanism solution for this earthquake, we can see that the, the fault that produced this earthquake was a northwest southeast striking fault. Now that's not an odd orientation for faults. In this part of Utah or anywhere in the western U.S., we have you know, basin and range extension, other tectonic forces at work that produce earthquakes of this um, orientation. But what's odd about this earthquake is the if you look at the beach ball there, this is a reverse fault. So this is a compressional fault in an area or at least near an area where we expect to see extension. We expect to see rocks being pulled apart rather than pushed together and compressed. So the first weird aspect of this event was the fault that produced it, that this was a reverse fault or a compressional uh, earthquake where rocks get shoved up over the top of each other rather than being pulled apart. Uh, so that's kind of an odd thing there. The second thing that makes this earthquake interesting and odd is the depth. Look at that depth there, 68 kilometers deep. That's exceptionally deep. And when I first saw this, I thought this was an error. I actually was like, this has got to be a mistake somewhere. Um, but lo and behold, that this has been um, reviewed by a seismologist. So the event was reviewed and confirmed. I even went into the University of Utah, which is the main database that produced the information for this earthquake and, and was able to look at some information on this event there. Um, and there you go, reviewed by a, a seismologist and that depth is still listed there. So 68 kilometers or about 42 miles, that's an exceptionally deep earthquake for this location and that's what really kind of threw me for a loop and again had me chasing this thing down a rabbit hole I even um texted our good friend mike poland at the usgs he thought it was odd too gave me the names of some folks at the university of utah uh, seismological uh states the people who run the earthquakes there at the university of utah sent a couple emails out haven't heard back from them um, and I've just kind of chased this thing on my own, but I think I found an answer to why this thing was so odd. Furthermore, the other reason this event was so weird and the reason that depth of 68 kilometers really caught me off guard is that's actually deeper than the thickness of the Earth's crust. So if we look at this map here of the United States, this shows us the thickness of the crust 
across the continental U.S. You can see in parts of the West, the crust is exceptionally thin, especially here again in the basin and range, Nevada, into western Utah, down into Arizona, up into Idaho. But as you cross basically the Wasatch Fault and head into what we call the Rocky Mountain Province or even the Colorado Plateau here, the crust does thicken. And if you look at where this earthquake occurred here, you know, it kind of plots up in that green blue color there, which make it would make it about 40 to 45 kilometers thick. So this earthquake, 68 kilometers, is actually of several kilometers, tens of kilometers deeper than the actual base of the crust. So which which is suggestive that it's occurring in the upper mantle. What makes that odd is that most earthquakes occur in the crust because that's where the temperatures and pressures are relatively low and that rocks under stress, under that tectonic stress, will tend to behave brittily. They will snap and break due to that stress and generate earthquakes. The deeper you go, we typically don't see those types of uh, events happening, earthquakes, because of the conditions deeper within the Earth. So here's another view. I was able to find another paper with a little better, uh, more detailed map here. So here's the state of Utah. And the colors there correspond to the thickness of the crust. So you can see there's a, a contour line there right along the Colorado Plateau boundary. The crust is about 35 kilometers thick. And then right about where our, our epicenter is here in northeastern Utah, this map here and this publication shows it being about 40 kilometers thick. So we have two maps now that jive pretty well, 40 to 45 kilometers in terms of depth. And this earthquake, again, being 68 kilometers, just incredibly um, interesting. So that, again, took me down another rabbit hole. And I think I figured out the answer. I was able to find a paper, a really helpful paper, that talks about upper mantle earthquakes. And basically, they're incredibly rare, um, having earthquakes in the upper mantle versus the shallower levels of the Earth's crust are pretty rare. We've only typically documented these in the Himalayas, parts of Tibet over there uh, near India and Asia where that collision's taken place. But here in this paper, they document several uh, deeper level earthquakes, upper mantle earthquakes occurring along the edge of the Wyoming Craton. Now, a Craton is the sort of nucleus of the ancient Precambrian nucleus of the North American continent, in this case, the Wyoming Craton. And so they document um, and look back at the historical earthquakes that have happened in the area. So let me get you down to their map here. So if we come down here to this map, make that a little bit smaller so we can get that all in. Let's see here, make it much smaller. But you can see here the map, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. Um, and these stars here are different earthquakes over the last maybe 40, 50 years or so that were exceptionally deep, basically these upper mantle earthquakes. And lo and behold, one of those earthquakes plots almost exactly or very close to the epicenter of the one that just occurred yesterday. So here, that orange star there at the bottom, I put these on Google Earth to kind of see how closely they plotted together. And you can see here, uh, here's the town of Vernal over here. And here is one of the highways, Highway 191. And there's the two locations. So here is this older earthquake that happened in 2020, small magnitude, 1.4. But look at the depth there. This was about a 56 kilometer deep earthquake. And then the earthquake that just happened yesterday, a much larger magnitude, uh, but a little bit deeper. And so I found this quite fascinating. And again, those two are only separated by, uh, let's see how far apart those are, like four miles apart. So incredibly close together spatially. Um, and going back to the map here. So we've got some information there on, um, you can see some of these other ones that have been in Wyoming, a couple others here in northeastern Utah. And the sort of the, the edge here, this is all right near the edge of the Wyoming Craton. So this is sort of the ancient border between Western North America, or excuse me, North America and the, the continental crust out there. There we go, now we've zoomed that out a little bit. There's the whole kind of view there. Um, Okay, so going down to their table here, this is where they actually list the data for each one of those earthquakes. And again, you can see these span a range from 1979 up to 2023. The paper is very new. The paper is actually this year. And there's that earth. There's that event um, that was very close to this earthquake that just occurred. Um, and you can see the depth there, about 56 kilometers, small magnitude, 1.4. Um, Pretty interesting. And then they've even estimated the temperatures at that depth. So what were the temperatures 
at that earthquake's uh, focus, uh, and you can see the temperatures there of nearly a thousand degrees uh, Celsius in terms of just um, estimations that they've made on the thermal conditions at that depth. Um, so a fascinating paper. I pretty much read the whole thing from top to bottom. Um, they did look at kind of like plotting where these are. So what's interesting about these is they're all definitely well into the mantle. And again, the mantle is a place where we think the rocks behave more ductily. And so the big question you might have now is like, why? And they don't have like a definitive smoking gun, but um, here are some of their conclusions here. Let's see. Um, they one one of the earthquakes they looked at, they or that another colleague looked at, they were induced by ascending fluids sourced from dehydration reactions in what's left of the Farallon plate that's actually subducted beneath uh, North America. So we currently suspected to reside below the Clayton. Um, so the presence of fluids in the vicinity of the earthquakes cannot be ruled out and may provide additional incentive for rupture. So a lot of things going on there, but something is different about these earthquakes, these deep level quakes that are allowing rocks to behave brittly, break, and transmit uh, that energy to the surface. What I found really interesting too was that this deep earthquake, usually earthquakes of that depth aren't felt at the surface, but we have you know all those reports of this thing actually being felt at the surface and for a 4.1 earthquake at that depth to still be felt at the surface i found was pretty interesting as well so again a fascinating um at least i thought what was a fascinating event and looking at the depth and seeing how interesting that was i kind of went down this rabbit hole here i'll link this paper along with some of the other information i've shared with you here today um, and we'll put that under the video description if you want to check that out on your own so again Fascinating earthquake here, not seemingly a fairly small earthquake, 4.1, uh, but one that actually had some very interesting data. And that's why it's always important to look at the depth, the beach balls, and other things when we're looking at these earthquakes, because you never know what you might find and what you might learn. So hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time. Take care.